One of the Millennium Development Goals, which is eradicating extreme poverty and hunger, is in line with Kenya's Vision 2030, which aims to achieve a high quality of life for all Kenyans. In the Kenyan Strategy paper, it is recognized that more efficient and appropriate utilization of resources the country has is key to raising incomes as a means of eradicating poverty and improving livelihoods. Kenya holds the largest deposits of the unique soapstone which is found in Tabaka area of Kisi County. The soapstone sector supports approximately 35,000 people in the local area who are directly involved in soapstone business, largely producing from home-based enterprises. The products account for 40% of the value of Kenya's craft exports, 90% of them being exported to Europe and America. The sector has potential in the future economic and private sector development in Kisi County. Over the years, the people of Tabaka have not made significant gains in spite of this resource due to the many constraints experienced by the sector and the area is characterized by poverty among the residents, poor roads, lack of water and electricity in their homes. Site Enterprise Promotion a local, not-for-profit development organization whose goal is the promotion of employment opportunities and economic growth among small-scale producers and enterprises in partnership with APT UK with funding from DFID, Department for International Development, has been working with soapstone actors in Tabaka on an initiative dubbed promoting rights and livelihoods of workers in the Kenyan soapstone sector. The uneven topography of Kisi County gives one a chance to spot Tabaka area from as far as Suneka Market. But Tabaka is not just another village. That is why a trip there is worth undertaking. Along the way, you acknowledge the aggressiveness of the local people to earn a living despite their numbers evidenced by land subdivisions and number of homesteads that dot the villages. Realso has been working with the key actors with the aim of improving the sector by addressing the following constraints. Low productivity, weakening demand for a limited product range, weak returns on labor for workers, poor incomes for the producers, poor and unsafe working conditions, poor organization within the value chain, and weak linkages with policy formulation processes. In the three and a half years, Railso worked with mine owners, miners, artisans, enterprises and buyers of Kisi stone products. The mine owners who are approximately 177 families who own the mines have been involved in training on recommended mining and safety, use of protective equipment PPS, use of appropriate tools and importance of restructuring the mines. The Mine Owners Association represents the needs of the mine owners and miners at the county and national levels forums. Mr. Andrew Orenge, who is a mine owner and chairman of Nyatike Miners Association, had this to say. The machine he has helped us the, our job we are doing here when we get some big stones. Uh, we pull it out, G pattern, when we use uh, uh, people all, all pushing with the hands. Orenge says they used to pull stones from the quarry with their hands which was tiresome and risky. But now they use the rail which makes work easier, cheaper and is safe. <laughs> alafu wakakuja hapa kwa kwale wakatuchangia nini seti ya kukaa wakati wa jua na wakati wa mvua observers note that real source intervention in the sector was timely 
It came at a time when Tabaka was always in the news for tragic accidents at the quarries. Several people could be buried alive while mining just because they did not apply proper mining skills. Now, the mines are no longer killer zones and in fact, they are well managed due to the skills imparted and no death has been reported since real soul intervention. Further, there are safety notices at the mines and this is good news that is coming from Tabaka. Once the stones are mined, they are sold to artisans and enterprises for carving into different products. The home-based and freelance artisans, who are over 10,000, have also benefited from RealSource work through training on use of appropriate tools, health and safety precaution at the workplace, use of protective equipment, access to appropriate working tools from established tool banks, construction of working sheds, and easy availability of stones. It is easy to spot women delivering their carvings to sellers and there are numerous shops selling soapstone materials in Tabaka. Also available are service providers who are key in assisting artisans, for example with drilling services which makes work easier. Enterprises are individually owned businesses involved in the production, wholesaling and export of soapstone products. They have a total of 1,200 permanent employees and also subcontract the home-based and freelance artisans depending on the volumes of their orders. Through RealSo, 12 enterprises came together to form KISIF, KC Soapstone Empowerment Forum, whose goal is to improve the sector for mutual benefits of all the actors. The current chairman of KISIF, Mr. Nyamukeri, had this to say on how they have worked with the real soul. It has really helped us to train on the sites of machine training. There is machines which use power or electricity. They have trained us how to use them. And secondly, it has trained us on occupational safety and health. Uh, act, which is how to, to manage our workshops, our working places, to be healthy. KISAC is a fair trade enterprise and a member of KISAF. They produce and export to fair trade markets and other markets in Europe and America. It is the largest enterprise in the sector and has about 100 workers. Kisak has worked with RealSo on training of workers, market linkages, and exposure trips. These interventions have contributed to improvement of the business operations and business growth. Ronald Masino is a carver who works as a supervisor at Kisak. <laughs> America Take this opportunity to thank the site organization for having the time to have come to the, this world. They have done a great job in trying to improve safety, product development, and bringing organizations together. Sir Daniel Apepo is the owner of Kisak and has been in the business for several years now. His showroom is characterized with carvings of various shapes and sizes.
You will be amazed with the prowess with which workers here perform, yet there is no school of fine arts in the region. Apparently, the skills in this industry have always been passed from generation to generation, and this is expected to continue until the resource is perhaps exhausted. Tabaka Jiwakali is another member of KISEF, and James Nyabegera is the chairman of Tabaka Jiwakali, a member of KISEF and has been working with the project since inception. He says that. <laughs> Moses Ondari is the chairman of Small Art Self-Help Group, which is a community organization comprising medium and small artists and member of KISEF. They too have been trained on fair trade and work with fair trade markets as well as other markets in Europe, America and Japan. Through working with RealSo, they have benefited in their work. But aside, they have been organizing workshops telling us the need of being united, the need of working as a team, uh, by also providing some uh, materials like uh, the gloves, the masks, the, some chains for pulling out the stones, some cutting machines, which would be used, they use for cutting machine, uh, some big big pieces of substance so it has, it has done some work but still we need more Sight has played a key role in encouraging local women to get involved in high paying tasks in the industry as opposed to their traditional roles of sanding and washing which are the lowest paid jobs in fact several women can now beat men carvers in the game One of the activities we have undertaken is work with to engage women who were previously not involved in carving and who express interest in gaining new skills and understanding how they can exploit and use their carving and artistic skills. And we have trained them so that they can engage in this work which gives them higher earnings than the traditional uh, women roles in the value chain. And we want to welcome you as you walk with us through the life of one of these women who have dared do what others have been done and broken up a new territory, opening up a door for hundreds of women. Gladys Mora, who is 38 years old, is a champion of women participation in better paying tasks. Previously, she undertook menial jobs preparing illicit brews in order to augment her family income. She now has a new life where she begins with her basic domestic tasks before she undertakes her carving tasks. Mora lives in a tiny piece of land in Gosere village and has to work extra hard to feed her family. She not only feeds the animals but also sweeps her compound before she leaves for her other new work, carving. A woman in carving work is a new phenomenon in Kisi for soapstone was initially a preserve of men. But Mora has the urge, the drive, will and passion to walk that path to and from the quarries. As she returns to join her members in carving, the mother of six skillfully works here. Mora says that unlike in the past when women dreaded this job, Many have come to like it as it generates good money. She used to get 20 shillings daily from her vegetable business, but now she can earn up to 500 shillings.
But Mora is not alone. She is among over 200 other women who were recently trained by real source in carving skills, business skills, and recommended safety at work, including use of protective equipment. RealSaw also constructed a shed where the women operate from. The shed acts as a training center too, where other women interested in carving come to be trained. 60 among over 200 women were glad to graduate and receive certificates at a special function. Their faces were full of smiles and jubilation was the order of the day. Daniel Apepo, who is also the member of Kisi County Assembly representing Tabaka Ward, was a guest at the graduation and had this to say to the women. Because we have seen women try to do the carving of the substance, which has never been done by women. It has been a big achievement for sight and for us as a community. Maybe what we need to challenge our people, more specifically the women, is to be more focused, more aggressive and remove this stigma that women cannot do a lot in society. Men also showed their support to the women. Mora's husband, Ogoti Obonyo, is a delighted man. While he was literally the breadwinner from the carving business, his wife is now a competitor of some sort. <laughs> Mora's husband is not alone and their nine-year-old husband Ombiro is happy that his mother, Mora, no longer brews Chang'a and is generating more money from carving which she uses to supplement the family budget. Ogoti who is in Standard 3 at St. John's Gosere Primary School, says his mother can not only assist in paying school fees, but medication too. The improvements by Real Soul are changing people's lives and the community. The women who were previously involved in brewing and selling illicit brews and the youth who have been consuming the illicit brews and engaging in criminal activities are now involved in carving. Carving by women has not only increased household incomes but also brought social transformation in tobacco. Mr. Alfayo Mogusu, the area chief, has seen many benefits since the project started working in Tabaka because social ills such as brewing and consumption of illicit brews, theft, idleness have reduced significantly. Women and more young people are now engaged fully in carving as an economic activity which has been made possible through easy access to stones, safety at the mines, access to appropriate tools, training of women and cooperation among the actors. We partner with the site enterprise to make sure that drug and substance abuse and especially the use and the consumption of Chang'a, illicit alcohol, Chang'a and Busa have drastically gone down because now most of the dealers who are working with substance, especially the covers, have more time to work, do the production, meaning that they have now more money in their pockets Site works through the following approaches as reported by the program manager and the CEO. The program manager, Jen Dongo, says. We normally have field officers who come from the region, like Hezbon Obara comes from this area and is familiar with the community, speaks the language, has been a cover, so he understands the entire community organization. And that is 
how site delivers most of its projects, working with and through the community that we work with in conjunction with other stakeholders, the government and other development organizations working in the area. For the last three and a half years, SITE has been working with small businesses in Kisi County, those in the Soapstone value chain, and Soapstone is one of the key resources in the county. We've been working um, with enterprises involved in mining, carving, and export of Soapstone. Site works with key stakeholders in the sector in advocacy and policy formulation for the sector. This is evident through the participation of the Speaker of the County Assembly in Kisi County at a local consultative forum for the sector actors held in Tabaka and in other county and national forums held in Kisi Town which were attended by the following. The bill uh, is looking at establishing uh, an authority. The Kisi County Executive Member in charge of trade says a county assembly bill is being formulated to strengthen support to the sector in order to increase gains at the local level and attract new investors. The achievements of real soap demonstrate that it is possible to transform a traditional occupation into a viable economic sector that can create jobs and increase incomes, thus tackling poverty and unemployment. The county government promised to steer the development agenda of Kisi Stone. 